This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Now, at the end of that last session, I left you a little planning exercise to sort out and to resolve. And that was to determine, given the choice, 31st of March, 30th of April, which accounting date would we choose or recommend for that client with reasons as to why. Now, what you'll see on the screen in front of you there, I've summarised what those assessments would be for the relevant tax years, where we chose firstly 31st of March or secondly 30th of April. Now, your first thoughts in making the call between do we choose March or do we choose April as our accounting date may have been the point that we referenced earlier, and that was about the level of overlap profits that would arise. What did you know? You knew that if you chose the 31st of March there as your accounting date, there would be no overlaps. Whereas if you chose 30th of April, that would maximise the overlaps at some 11 months worth of overlap period. What that would mean is that the bigger the overlap, the amount of profit that arises, then the credit back in 10 years, 5 years, 20 years from now, whenever you cease trading, the value of that overlap is going to erode over time. Again, just through the normal effects of inflation there. So that you may have thought to be a compelling argument, and it is an argument, but I'd suggest not compelling. It's an argument to say, oh, well, use 31st of March. So some of you may have gone down that route. Others of you, I hope now, have seen that there's more to this than just looking at the amount of overlap. And that is year by year through the opening years of that new business. What you want is to be assessed on as low a profit figure as you possibly can. And whichever route, therefore, gives you the lower assessments, because they are going to be different at some point here, that is the route that I would choose. Now, just have a little look at what we've got here in relation to that. What have you got? You've got that in the first tax year, we've got £9,000 being assessed whether you chose March or April as the accounting date. Remember, I made sure that the profit figures that we used were on, a, again, the same average profit basis. £3,000 for the opening 15 or 16 month period, and effectively £5,000 for the 12 month period when we had a £60,000 profit for our first full year end. So, no difference in 1617. No difference in 1780. Again, £36,000 was the assessment under each choice of accounting date. But look at what has happened in this critical third tax year. If we chose 31st of March, you were able to use current year basis, and you went on, therefore, to use the second accounting period of profit where the profits were higher. And that was £60,000 being assessed. Whereas, if we had chosen 30th of April, then for this third tax year, you yet again use the profits of the opening 16-month period, which repeated the assessment figure for the second year at £36,000. So there's the critical question. In the 1819 tax year, what would you rather be assessed on? Would you rather be assessed on 36,000 or 60,000 pounds? Now, I'd hope you don't have to be Einstein to work out, yeah, I'd rather be on 36. If you went with March as your accounting date, you're going to have an assessment 24,000 pounds bigger than it would have been had you chosen April. Now, that, if, for example, and you may well be here, you probably will be, a higher rate taxpayer. If you've got an extra £24,000 in the higher rate tax bound of 40%, 40% on 24000 is what, 9600 That's very nearly an extra £10,000 of extra tax. Once we've counted in what you don't know about yet, we haven't seen, but we'll see as national insurance contributions that would be payable on these profit figures then we're probably talking about a figure closer to, if not above, £10,000 extra tax for the 1819 tax year if you chose the 31st of March. That is a very compelling argument, therefore, for using the 30th of April 
and having a much lower tax figure to pay, both in terms of income tax and also in terms of national insurance contributions. Why has it worked out this way? Because what I've done is to give you profits that were going up on an average profit basis. Profits were increasing from the first to the second accounting period. And if that were to continue to apply, then what you discover in is each subsequent year, again, April would mean you're being assessed on a lower amount of profit. Remember, if you'd chosen March, then for 1920 tax year, that would have been the year ended 31st of March 2020. And if that profit period, for example, had been £70,000, I could have made it higher, but you'd still see anything bigger than 60, profits are rising. That year on year thereafter, so long as the profits continue to arise, that the 30th of April date will assess you on a lower profit because it's an older period. That £60,000 there for 1920 tax year, that was the year ended 30th of April 19. If you choose April, you're, you're tested on an older, you're assessed rather, on an older period. Year ended 30th of April 19 rather than the year ended March 20. If profits are rising, older profits are smaller profits and therefore choose the 30th of April. What I could have done in this question was to give you a big opening period of profit. Profits were being made at a higher rate of profit per month than they were in the second period and potentially the third period. So if profits started big and then declined, the last thing that you would want, as you've seen here, is for the first three tax years to all be based on that bigger profit. You would want only the two tax years to be based on the bigger profit, meaning that by the time you got to the third year, the actual profits now coming in would be lower, and therefore you'd have a lower figure. So a simple rule of thumb here to use, if profits are rising in opening years, choose the 30th of April. If profits are declining from the opening period to the future periods there, then you would use 31st of March. Okay, hopefully therefore we've understood the reasoning behind our choice of accounting date. And for those of you who pick 31st of March, based on our comments about overlap, it's a valid point, but it's not the most compelling argument. The most compelling argument is looking at that third year there and seeing that if you chose March, you could be paying about an extra £10,000 worth of tax for the year. And so long as profits continue to rise, again, you'd be paying each year, if you chose March, on a higher profit rather than a lower profit, and you'd pay more tax accordingly. Answer, choose the 30th of April there. So a little bit of planning there for, for that purpose. Okay, now we should be able to deal with any opening years problem. Whatever date we started trading, whatever accounting date we then choose, whether we have a short period, whether we have a long opening period, whatever circumstance we see, we should always be able to establish what are the assessments for each tax year and also there what, if any, are the overlap profits that arise and what happens to them. This is work that could be tested across the board in terms of your exam in any of the three sections of the paper. Again, there's a need to know these rules. Opening years always cause trouble because there are so many different rules that need to be learned specifically and most importantly for the second year. The only way you'll do that is with practice. So at this, this point, again, you may wish to uh, pause the presentation and for you then to work through from the chapter, if we go back here to the, uh, the chapter, work through on that chapter examples two through to four, which are further examples using opening years. You may already have done them, but if you haven't, work examples two through to four. Then rejoin us again so that then we can deal with, as you will see here, 
closing your rules. Now again, don't panic at this point. Don't think, well, those opening your rules, they were horrendous. There's so much to learn. My brain is going to explode. No. When it comes to closing years, it's a whole lot easier. There's just three steps that we have to learn to be able to work out the assessments over the closing years. Learn them, apply them, job done. Maybe they're all, but so that's what you get in your exam. But pause now, work those examples please through to, uh, from two through to four. Check it out with the answer at the back, make sure that you are happy with them. And uh, then again, pick it up again from this point onwards where we'll deal with those closing year rules. Okay, that's our look therefore at the closing year rules, hoping that now you have uh, resolved the issues and practiced those issues in relation to opening years. Right, the rules for dealing with the closing years of a taxpayer ceasing to trade, as we said, and I repeat and reassure you, much more straightforward than when we dealt with the opening years with all the different options that we would see. CYB will be used up to and including the penultimate tax year. The word penultimate means, means the one before last there, so the penultimate tax year, the one before the final tax year, one before last. The basis of assessment for the final tax year is then as follows. You want any remaining trading profits from the end of the basis period for the previous, the penultimate year of assessment. So this is either going to be one or possibly two periods of profit that will exist. So any profits as yet unassessed up to and including the penultimate tax year, there's only one other year that can go into, so it or they go into the final tax year, taking you through to the date of cessation. Remember then any overlap profit, sometimes known here as overlap relief, the terms can be used synonymously when dealing with a closing years example. Any overlap profits that arose in opening years may now be credited back. They will be deducted here in deriving the assessment for what now is the final tax year. And that deduction, you can label that as overlap relief. Okay. This, I said, could be done and dealt with in a three-step approach. So let's therefore just take you through what those three steps are. Now, when dealing with an opening years problem, the first thing that we had to do was to identify the first tax year. So now what do we do? We firstly identify what is the final what is the last tax year in which we traded. And identifying the final tax year will be based on what date. Well, when you started to trade, the start date told you the first tax year. So very obviously, this final tax year is based on your cessation date. When did you finish trading? So that is your final tax year. Having identified it, we note it and go back. Second step, go back to penultimate tax year and assess that penultimate tax year and indeed any earlier tax years that may, you may be required to deal with but assess the penultimate tax year any further tax years before that as well using CYB. We use current year basis we've seen in the notes up to and including the penultimate tax year. So we therefore will use CYB in that penultimate tax year. And that then means we come to the third and final uh, step, which is all remaining profit assessed in the final tax year as reduced, if of course there is any, as reduced by any overlap profits, or as you may now refer to it here, overlap relief. That's the idea, that's what we do. Okay, let's therefore work a little example based on those rules and see how we deal with it. Okie dokie. 
So, we are told taxpayer had prepared accounts to the 30th of September in each year prior to ceasing to trade on, well let's make that the 31st of January 2018 prior to ceasing to trade on the 31st of January 18. So we'd originally prepared accounts through to the 30th of September. And what they'll then of course do is to give you what were the tax adjusted trading profits for the periods leading up to that cessation date, cessation date the 31st of January 18. Okay, let me give that information to you. Oops, accounting year end. Now we've previously prepared accounts to the end of September. So we may be told this accounting year ended uh, 30th of September 16, accounting year ended. 30th of September 17, and then the final period through to a cessation date of the 31st of January 18. So we prepared accounts to our 30th September date all the way through to the 30th of September 17. We then traded on from the 1st of October 17 through to the end of January 18, to another four month period there before then ceasing to trade. What tax adjusted trading profits did we have for these periods? I'll tell you that we had £50,000 as the tax adjusted trading profit to September 16. That had fallen to £20,000 for the year ended September 17. We can see the writing is on the wall for this business. And the period to the 31st of January 18, there was then a further £7,000 worth of profit. What we're also told that we would need to be aware of is what overlap profits arose in the opening years. And the only way that the other thing that could be done here, you may be given a relatively short lived business and you're actually told the start date and then all the way through with the accounting periods to this, the cessation date. So you have to use both your basis of assessment in opening years to work out the opening year assessments and to determine then that overlap profit, which you then use on the cessation of trading, which we know, crediting it back, reducing what would have been the assessment in the final tax year of trading there. And I'll tell you now that those overlap profits here amounted to some £5,000. Okay, now remember we had that three step approach. Back at your note, what does it say? Step one, identify which is the final tax year and that's based on your cessation date. There's your cessation date, 31st of January 18. So what tax year does that date fall within? Again, basic questions. So the 31st of January 18 falls, of course, within the 1718 tax year. So you now know that the final tax year will be 2017-18. Once you've identified the final tax year, go back to the penultimate tax year. So if you know the final year is 1718, then the penultimate tax year must be 2016-17, 2016-17. And assess using CYB. So what period will that be? That will be, now look again at the information in the question, what was our year end date? 30th of September. Which 30th of September therefore falls within, as we know, the 16-17 tax year? Oops. Very obviously that will be the year ended 30th of September 
16. What profit did we make for the year ended September 16? That there, as you can see, was £50,000. So in it goes, £50,000 is the assessment. Step one, what's the final tax year? 1718. Step two, go back to penultimate tax year. You now know that that must be 1617 and assess using CYB. Step three, the third and final step, list out any remaining profits. That is either going to be one or maximum, as here, two periods of profit. Take away from that any overlap profits, any overlap relief that is available to you. What will that therefore lead to here? We've got as far as September 16. So we've got therefore these two figures to include year ended September 17, final period to January 18, and then take away those overlap profits. So let's see if I can remember what those numbers are there. So we will have going into 1718, accounting year ended 30th of September 17. We'll also then have the period to 31st of January 18, and we will then deduct our overlap profits, or otherwise known as overlap relief. Now, our year ended September 17, do check me, but I think that was 20,000, followed by 7,000, and our overlap profits were five. Just check I remember, got that. Yeah, 20,000, 7,000, and 5,000, lovely stuff. Okay, what does that therefore give us as an assessment for this year? 20 plus seven, 27 less five is 22,000 pounds. 22,000 pounds, job done, assessment sorted for final tax year. And that's it, all we've got to do. Closing years, so much easier than those opening year problems, where again, so many different options depending on your start date, your choice of accounting date, as to what the assessments could be. None of that trouble here in closing years. Three-step approach, look at your cessation date, what tax year is that, that's the final tax year. Note it, leave it, go back to penultimate tax year. Penultimate tax year, assess using CYB. Put your CYB assessment in and then you can, and if you have to go back further, of course, do other prior CYB assessments. But after the penultimate tax year, all remaining profits, it'll be either one or two, go then into the final tax year. Take away, if there is one, any overlap profits in the form of overlap relief, and you've got your assessments duly sorted. Okay, now in relation to our notes here, if I take you back to that, We've uh, got the rules for closing years, as we've seen. We've then got uh, example five uh, for you to work out what will be the assessments for bodies there who have ceased to trade. OK, work through that one. So again, you may want to pause at this particular point in time. Work that exercise. Make sure that you're happy with those rules for closing years. And then uh, join us again where we look at the basis periods for capital allowances.